many years. My name's Spider anyway. I uh, come up from Lower Hutt for the day and uh, been here for many, many years. I think this is the first time I've ever walked into this place and actually turned the heater on in the commentary box. It's usually quite okay here. and Often you're needing a bit of uh, cooling in that, but uh, going through Fox and it was eight degrees and I guess uh, pretty well I'm preaching to the people mostly outside who actually know what's going on out there. So she's as cold as a mother-in-law's kiss and, and it, interesting, it uh, might look a little bit fine out there, but just uh, as I turned off uh, the main road between Sanson and Palmerston in towards uh, Fielding, um, there was actually spitting on my windscreen. So uh, I don't know. I don't see any depth in the clouds today. Uh, I don't. Th I've looked at the weather forecast. We're pretty in for a, a good but cold day. And uh, right now we got race one out there under action. And this is the intermediate trophy. Uh, Eight laps, ten laps for the next race, eight, five, six, and five. So we're varying in the lap numbers and uh, three rounds today. So uh, the intermediate trophy's out there at the moment. I've, I've just arrived. I uh, had a few things to deal with at home before I got here, so I'll just have a look. And uh, Neil Chapel qualified on pole position with uh, Roger Cantlow there in second place, followed by Uriah Rike and Todd Ackford, Colin Terry, Tarvin Walker, Chris Beams, Richard Mark and Barrett, Jason Dawes, and Kyron O'Neill, that's the top 10 in the qualifying out of 15 competitors out there and see two of them actually uh, did not uh, score at all uh, in the uh, qualifying session. So whether I'm, I'm not sure I haven't been around the pits, I've just driven in, sort of signed in and got the program and ready for action. So right now we've got an eight lap race out there on front of us and is Neil Chappell even out there? Because I didn't uh, hear Chappie, no, a DNS on the mid speed 600 on the number 15 bike. So the fastest qualifier, unfortunately, not out there on the field. Um, Going to have to uh, see what we can do about the uh, screen. It's reasonably good, but it's only showing me some of the information there. So best lap time's up there. Uh, the last lap time's not there, but uh, I'll go and see the Tim Gibbs and Joan Gibbs shortly and see if they can compress my screen for me so we can bring up uh, some proper information there to keep you up to the pace. The best lap's always good. But it's always nice to know what someone is doing right at the moment. And uh, we had a gap of uh, 1.4 seconds between first and second there, between Roger Catro and Uriah Reich and, uh, on the 57 machine there. That was over up to 2.8. And it already looks like that Roger Catro was showing us the way around the track and, uh, on this uh, three-cylinder Yamaha, a 600cc that's been chopped down from four cylinders into three cylinders. And a beautiful sounding motorcycle I've done with this with Yamahas and Suzuki's, and I think I've seen a Kawasaki on the track in New Zealand in this configuration. And interesting, there was one of these bikes down at uh, in the car at the Burton Road Challenge last year, and Guy Martin, the legend from uh, the UK, was down there, and he just uh, he just couldn't believe what they'd done to it. He'd never heard of that principle before. It was. Uh, uh, I'm trying to think of the first person that done it here in New Zealand. Was it uh, Chris Osborne? I remember taking a trip up to uh, one of these winter series uh, before I was commentating the full season just to hear one of these machines going. I just wanted to hear. I got a, a bit of a soft spot for three cylinder four strokes. I'm not a big fan of two stroke noise. I guess it back from the Marlborough series days when things were so damn noisy with the old TR500s, TR750s, and even the RGs and TZs. Yes, they sound good, but they were so noisy. But uh, what happened in the Marlborough series too is a guy called Graham Crosby came along, and that guy was uh, that guy was an absolute hero. I think he only ever had one race win at Marlborough, but him on his uh, street modified Z1R, first of all Z900, then Z1R Kawasaki, uh, just thundering it down there, a lot of time on his back wheel, just sliding the thing all over the place, and that's the top of Grand Prix bikes of the day. Um, and the sound of the four stroke got into my head, but uh, back to what I was talking about, about a three cylinder bike, it's, uh, you know, you hear, I, th I guess you hear a lot of twins, you hear a lot of fours, you hear a lot of singles, a uh, triple's different. If we had, uh, everything was triple, and then we went back to uh, listen to the odd twin and odd four, we'd probably favor them, but certainly the triples are great. Uh, so a 2.8 second uh, gap there has opened up to 5.1, and really got to get as quicker than his qualifying time. I guess the track's warming a bit. I guess uh, he's warming up a bit. I wonder how many bikes out there have got heated grips on them. Uh, Roger Castro qualified on a 117.7. He's now doing a 116.4. The quickest qualifying was Neil Chappell, Chappie. Uh, 116.9, so uh, Roger is quicker, and uh, hopefully Neil Chappell can get back out there and uh, no idea what's happened to him. Uh, whether, yeah, no idea at all. Not even going to speculate. 
It's a good battle going on between Uriah Riken and Richard Martin Barrett there coming on to the front straight as we halfway through the race, four laps down, and here they go down the front straight, 57, followed by uh, number three. Now their lap time, their best lap time is just 10 thousandths of a second different. I, some people come along to this meeting and say, oh, I'm not going to the Vic Winter Series, you know, the racing's not that good, and I tell you what, we're already here today talking about two riders within 10 thousandths of a second, and right now on the track, they've got about seven bike lengths, if not that, uh, as they go through turn three here at Manfield, the uh, left hand is through the S's. So uh, remember last time, um, the, ba the battles all day long were pretty damn good. You might have the odd person escaping out the front, as we see Roger Castro doing. Uh, 16 and a half, or just below 16 and a half as quickest time, but right now those two bikes in second and third, you can see them up the centre straight, 57 blue and white, uh, and the Richard Mark and Barrett speed junkie colours with the black and uh, orange. We got back to fourth place, and it's Wong News, Todd Aykroyd on an S3 650 Suzuki. Um, two, two couple of classes out here, there's the Intermediate Trophy and the Super Light bikes out on the track and the first of the Intermediate Trophy ones is Tarbin Walker who's moved up into 6th place where he was sitting at 7th so uh, looking out there, Todd Aykroyd goes into that uh, big Go Media sweeper there uh, further back down the back straight it is Colin Terry with Tarbin Walker and we've got two bikes having a bit of a battle uh, that'll be Luke Miller and Chris Beams Chris Beams I think is on the, uh, on the Honda 400 yes the NC30 VRF 400 one of the beauties about coming to a, a regular series as you start to pick up on the colours of bikes it's uh, often not the case it's the uh, other meetings where I'm doing just one off but never mind those guys going down the front street followed by 91 uh, looks like the Rizzler colour type of thing. Uh, the RG250 uh, of uh, Jason Dawes from Wanganui, supported by Whitelock uh, Suzuki. So five laps down and three to go. Just have to cast my eye out there and see where I can see the lead bike, in fact. And uh, just looking out there where I can see the lead bike. Sorry, folks. Just got to get my bearings here, and we'll be coming onto the fronts. No, it won't be. It doesn't look quite fast enough. There's a bike down there at the uh, hairpin with the yellow flag out there. Now, I'm going to wonder who this is. Uh, I'm not going to speculate at the moment, but we're just having a look for Roger Cathro. It's not Roger Cathro. It's a blue bike there. I didn't bring my binoculars up. They are down in the car. There's Roger there. Uh, okay, I did suspect maybe it might be the number 57 bike, but I can rule that out because here he is coming along the front straight and uh, still that battle is relatively close between Uriah Riken on the 57 machine and Richard Mark and Barrett there. Uh, they are going into turn one here at Manfield at the Toyota corner and Mark and Barrett closes right up in behind them on the uh, 690cc KTM. Riken is riding a Suzuki GSX-R 450 as well. So the battle feels quicker and quicker. Um, still haven't uh, bettered their best lap time, set in lap two or three. Most of the top uh, five riders uh, set them early on in this race with six laps, three quarters of the race gone. Uh, just got to have a look out through the program. We'd better uh, give some credit towards uh, the sponsors as well. It'll be here at CTAS, uh, text to web systems. Uh, have a talk to Grant Collingwood in between races. He's here all the way from the Waikato uh, filming the day and you can uh, look at the day uh, racing any time you want to in the future for the next hundred years probably and indeed any footage he's ever done is now available for it. It used to be that after the race meeting you had to pay $2.50 uh, $2 a race or you had to pay um, uh, $10 for the whole day, well worth it, but uh, he's freed that up and uh, incidentally if you're looking for older historical footage, you know, back three, four years ago, uh, the majority of it is available, but some of it is just not there um, on the free-to-air stuff, and all you can do is uh, send Grant Collingwood a message and he will unlock that for you. It takes him a little bit of time, it will take you, uh, half a day, him half a day to get round to doing it, he is a businessman, and uh, if you want some uh, particular historical footage, be it the National Series, be it uh, any of the, uh, the smaller meetings he's covered, just get in touch with him. Right, I'm going to go back into the turn three to have a look at this battle on the final lap for second and third place between uh, Uriah Riken and Richard Mark and Barrett. We do see that uh, going into the Higgins corner there here at Manfield is Roger Castro there on the uh, lead bike sponsored by RS Motorcycles from Lower Hutt. So I don't think we're going to see a change for second and third position. Um, they're still attaining the distance. I haven't seen Mark and Barrett poke his nose in front of the GSX-R 450 of uh, Uriah Riken. There is a lapper coming down this back straight. Uh, 
and uh, they may come across that. So I don't think this battle's going to change here. Go back to fourth place, and it is Tarbin Walker. Uh, sorry, Todd o Ackroyd. Todd's coming out of Higgins at the moment. Here we go, Roger Catro, the first win of the day. Uh, and the best lap of a 16.271, so just over two seconds quicker than anyone else. Hopefully he'll be mixing with some other riders out there, and uh, there's the battle for second place there, and the gap is uh, 0.268 in the second. Uh, that, so it did go to Uriah Riken, he did stay there in second place there, with third place Richard Mark and Barrett. Todd Aykroyd goes through there in fourth place and looking along the uh, big sweeper there. It looks like a battle coming out there between Tarbin Walker and Colin Terry. They've been hammering it out most of the race long. Tarbin is on the number 13 spot and just takes it uh, ahead of Colin Terry. So uh, very close between these guys too in terms of quickest lap, about uh, less than 20 thousandths of a second. So uh, 20 thousandths of a second. Uriah Riken actually set his quickest lap on uh, lap 8, 18.238. So did... Uh